business reviews, culinary reviews. Our main goal is to make you all successful. The gentleman in the long is going to speak to us this afternoon. He's a restaurant business consultant, he performance coach. He's been a chef in two five star, five -star hotels. He's cooked alongside James Beard, award winning chefs. Like Dean Fury, Dean Jack Hippen, Julia Child, Connie Fish, Mary Sue, and Sue Ferringer. He is a restaurateur and currently owns a uh, Southwest Authentic Texas barbecue. Uh, he's been part of creating, opening, and designing and operating a dozen of uh, restaurant concepts. Today he's going to share with you his absolute best product, best practices and strategies for preparing and executing a food service business for the holidays. Let me introduce Ryan Brooklyn. The story goes like this, Bo Eason, my mentor, the guy that I'm working with, he wanted to be the best at everything he did, so he showed up earlier than everybody else, and he stayed later than everybody else, until he got transferred to the 49ers in 87. Two hours before the first day of practice, walks out onto the field, what does he see out on the field? Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice. He's like, dude. I'm always the first on the field. Look. So he's like, you practice over there, I'll practice over here. 50 yard line, don't cross it. So they go through their two hours of warm. This is two hours before every other football player shows up. Two hours before every other football player shows up. Finally, everyone starts coming out, they get in their lineups, and the first drill they do is just a very simple, they just, they walk out a couple paces, break, catch a football, hand it back to the Sorry. quarterback. Who's the quarterback? Joe Montana, that's right, I got some football fans in the room. So you got my mentor, Bo Eason, Jerry Rice, Joe Montana, pretty good football team. Here's what it looks like. Two or three guys in line before Jerry Rice. And this is what they do. You know, they walk out. You know, it's two weeks before football, so no one wants to get hurt. They're just warming up. So they go, and they walk out, break, catch the ball, hand it off to Jerry Rice. Or uh, to Joe Montana, sorry. You know, they walk out, break, catch the ball, Hand it off. Jerry Rice's turn, right? He goes, <laughs> breaks hard, boom, catches the ball, it's gone. I mean, gone, 100 yards. 100 yards down the field, touchdown. All the way down the other side. What does he do when he gets in the field, in the end zone? Turns around, he runs back, slams the ball into Joe Montana's chest. Gets back in line. Next guy goes, and he's like, catches the ball. This goes on and on. Joe Montana's turning again, or uh, Jerry Rice's turning again. <laughs> All the way. So after practice, Bo walks up to Jerry Rice and he says, Jerry, what's that all about? 
Jerry says the bow, he says the bow. You understand, man. Because you don't understand. These hands, when these hands touch the ball, this body scores a touchdown. When these hands touch a ball, this body scores every single time. I think I pitched my chest, the mic's going out. I don't know. But I wanted to share that story with you guys because there we go, now it's working. It's about a relationship to practice. We're going to talk about practices. We're going to talk about the best food service practices for the holiday season. But there's great stuff in here. Really, really great stuff in here. I'm really excited to share it with you. But if we don't put it into practice, if we don't score a touchdown with it every time, if we don't train our bodies, if we don't take this seriously, if we don't go back to our restaurants and do this, there's all the other guys on the field, but no one knows their name, right? Everybody in this room knows Jerry, right? So I'm going to cap that story off before we get started here with um, fast forward 10 years, 15 years or so. Everyone, Anyone here watch... Uh, Dancing with the Stars? I can't put my hand in my watch. Okay. <laughs> was Jerry Rice on Dancing with the Stars? And did Jerry Rice win on Dancing with the Stars? When Bo found out Jerry Rice on Dancing with the Stars, this guy doesn't watch Dancing with the Stars, but he told his wife, he says, we're watching it this year, and Jerry's going to win. And how did he know Jerry's going to win? He said, Jerry's not a dancer. How did he know Jerry's going to win? Because when these hands touch a ball, his body scores every time. So, again, like Stu said, I, I had to share that story. Was everyone, whatever, I had to share that story. So, my name is Ryan Grompen. I am a restaurant consultant, and today we're going to talk about best practices for you during the holiday season. Really quick, I'm going to spend about a minute telling you about really what I do. I turn any good restaurant into a great business. I turn any good restaurant into a great business. I read a book 10 years ago, a lot of you probably read it, called... Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Anyone read that book? By Robert Kiyosaki? Go read that book. Great book. Great, we got someone who read the book. The follow-up to that book is called The Cash Flow Quadrant. This is stolen right from The Cash Flow Quadrant. Thanks, Robert Kiyosaki, I appreciate it. Really quick, you have an employee. As an employee, you have a job. There's basically, this is the four ways you can earn an income. Four ways to earn a living. Employee, you have a job. We all know what that means. You work for somebody else. You get, you, there's a cap on how much you can make. So a lot of times, we say, actually, before I do that, who in here is a business owner? Raise your hand, just help me out here. Who owns a business? Great. So a lot of us decide maybe whatever, we get pressure with being an employee, so we either become self-employed, you own a job, or you become a business owner, you own a system, people work for you. And then the fourth level of this is the investor, your money works for you. Again, who here owns a business? Keep your hands up for a second here. Ask yourself this. How long can you take off work? How many days? How many weeks? How many hours? And not see a drop in income? Customer satisfaction? Revenue? Any of the above. See, most of us, I keep it in the wrong way. We go to self-employee, and that's not spelled wrong. That's a self-employee because a doctor or a lawyer if you don't bill, if you don't create your money, if you don't earn your money, if you don't do the job, you don't get paid. So you go from self-employee to business owner to an investor. We're not going to talk about investors today, but we're talking about what it means to be a business owner. Actually, we're not going to talk about that today. I just wanted to share that with you. That's a little bit of what I do. And then to wrap that all, the foundation to a lifetime of restaurant success. Oh, you're killing me. I'm sending them all the, the video and this is done. I need the light. So yeah. your ability to manage systems and develop people. If you're going to write down one thing today, write this down. The foundation to a lifetime of restaurant success is your ability to manage systems and develop people. Because when you're a business owner, you own a system. People work in the system. People work for you. They do the system. All right, so we're all here for holiday season. I got some really, really great stuff for you for the holiday season. I'm really excited. Actually, uh, Stu Blazer and I came up with, or actually Stu came up with it. I developed it. What? Great idea, I can't wait to share with you. But holiday season, your number one goal, get more customers, make more money, right? Holiday season, that's kind of what all of our goals are. Make more money, or get more customers, make more money. When? November, December? 
See, one of my favorite authors, Stephen Covey, wrote a book called Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. And the second habit, start with the end in mind. If your goal is to make more money and get more customers in November or December, we're missing out. We're going to be like everyone else in line, right? Going through the motions. Catching the ball, handing it off to the quarterback. Jerry Rice? Jerry Rice wants to make money in January, February, when no one else is making money. When your restaurant's slow in January, February, right? You're going to get people in your restaurant in November, December. How we treat them, how we take care of them, with the strategies we put into place for, January, for November, December, will greatly, greatly impact your January and your February. Okay. Start with the end in mind. The end, fill our restaurants during the slow months. How are we going to do it? We're going to utilize the people that are coming to us anyways. We're not going to spend any money on marketing. They're going to come to you anyways. So again, we're going to start with the end in mind. Today we're going to go over pre-holiday preparation, holiday execution, and post-holiday, what we're going to do January, February. Really quick, I want to go over a few kind of menu trends, stuff that we're seeing out there in the industry. This will help us as we develop our holiday practices. If you're in a family restaurant, fine dining, banquet catering, sorry, it, uh, I'm a Mac guy. It works on Macs. Or who has an iPhone or anything. I'm sorry if you don't. Uh, when I converted this to PowerPoint, it does some weird things because it just doesn't speak the same language. But we want to stay away from the same boring stuff that people can cook at home. This is what's happening in menus right now. Like, for, that's not really a trend. That's kind of always. I, I want, when I go out for, to a restaurant, I want something I can't cook at home. That's part of the experience. There's really two reasons I go to a restaurant. I want to be taken care of. I want service. And I want something I can't do at home. I happen to be a great chef. I know people who aren't great chefs, but they still love to cook at home, and why would they go to a restaurant to get something they can do at home? That's why you're competing on price, because you're giving them something they can do a lot cheaper. I don't want any of you to ever compete on price again. I want you to compete on quality. I want you to give them the best. Then you don't have to ever worry about your pricing again. You can charge whatever you want. When you're the best, you can charge whatever you want. So stay away from food, or when you do something that others can't do, you can charge whatever you want. So stay away from food people can cook at home. Comfort food done well. I know comfort food and food people can do at home, that sounds weird, but I'm not talking about your grandmother's meatloaf here. I'm talking about, you know, meatloaf's popular, right? But I'm talking about beef and veal and pork and wrapped in bacon and smoked and with the smoothest, creamiest mashed potatoes and the best green beans ever. Nobody can cook that at home. You guys can do that in a restaurant. I call this the Food Network Effect. Who here watches Food Network? I like live on the Food Network. I love that show or that channel. But it's like, how good does that food look? They do a great job making the food look really really good on the Food Network, and they're using ingredients that nobody even knew 10 years ago. When I started cooking and I was watching the Food Network, you couldn't get half of the ingredients you saw on TV at your grocery store. Now, we have access to that. Your customers have access to amazing, amazing product that they didn't a few years ago. And so, we got to step it up. We really, everyone in this room, we got to step it up. We got to give them stuff better than they're seeing on TV. We got to give them the most amazing service, the most amazing food. I, I know Martha Stewart, Food Network Magazine, um, Bon Appetit, any of those, they're great. Not because of the ideas you see, but they keep you on your toes. They're three months ahead. They're smart. They have big companies, big business, a lot of people working for them to get ahead of the season. So I love getting a subscription to that, to those magazines because we're in the middle of winter and they're showing this beautiful summer tomato salad. And I'm like, oh my God, like, I got to start thinking about my menu. How many of you are like, it's summertime already? And your reps start showing you a few things because they're just coming in the season, but you haven't started thinking about your menu yet for summer. That's why I like a subscription to a magazine like that. Don't steal their recipes. Don't do what they're doing because other people are watching. But it keeps you on your toes. It keeps you ahead. Uh, we're going through this a little quick here because I'm on some time. But I'm going to, anyone who wants it, I'm going to send a copy of the presentation and the video and I'll send that out to you guys. Uh, fast food, coffee shop, and diner. Exotic, bold, original, and authentic. Um, I'm going to give you an example of being less pedestrian, less everyday. People don't want everyday food anymore. They have a food network effect. They're watching it on the food network. They see it. They love it. They want it. Trends are always changing, food network effect. Follow the chains on social media, especially for like fast food and guys like that. So, they are so good at social media. They're so fast. Follow them. See what they're doing. See the food they're serving. I'm going to use the example of Wendy's. Has anyone eaten Wendy's lately or even Taco Bell? Wendy's has a pretzel, like a, a beer, onion braised pretzel with like a whole grain mustard. Wendy's. Wendy's is serving beer braised onions, whole grain mustard, and a pretzel bun for like four bucks. 
They sell pretzel buns here. They're great. I love them. I use them in some of my restaurants. But the point is, is we got to be giving our customers something different, something better, something that they can't get at Wendy's for four bucks. Was there a question or? Oh, I'm sorry. So let's talk about again preparations. Have your theme menus early. We're already October 10th or 8th. I don't even know. We're in October. That's what I know. If your menus aren't ready for the holidays, get them ready tonight. Don't go to sleep. Don't go to sleep. Who has their holiday menus ready right now? Price is ready to go. One guy's sleeping in there. Three guys are sleeping there. The rest of you, don't go to sleep tonight. Get your menus ready. You don't have a lot of time. Jerry Rice, remember? Practice. Your relationship to practice. So the menus that I'm talking about are Thanksgiving, Christmas, Christmas brunch, and then some private office parties. Uh, I like to do a modified brunch. If anyone's interested, I'll tell you what that is later. I'm, I'm kind of not big on the buffet thing as much. Depends on your restaurant, obviously, and what you're doing. But I like a modified brunch where you get a little bit of a buffet and you get an entree. It's, it's a cool little formula that I've worked out. I can share it with you. Or family style for Thanksgiving. For Christmas Eve, I like family style or a prefix menu. For brunch, I like what I like that modified brunch again or family style. And then private office parties. You really need only nine menus. We're talking about a buffet, a pre fee, and a limited menu at three price points each, a low, a medium, and a high. Now you've got every tool in your arsenal to sell to anyone imaginable in your restaurant. A lot of people are afraid to put expensive menus out there. Challenge yourself. Put a menu out there that's more expensive than you've ever done. Back it up with the quality. You won't believe that people will pay. People will pay when you, are, when you look them in the eye and you give them the best quality. You can't get any better than this. They're going to pay the price. They're going to do it. So I challenge you guys. Try it. Here's some fun ideas. Ugly sweater. Who's got an ugly sweater at home? Who's got that, that sweater? That's right. That their grandmother gave them. Put it on. I know. Stu Heise, my favorite rep over there, has a couple of ugly sweaters. Put them on. Take a picture. Put it on Instagram and embarrass yourself. <coughs> but invite everyone to embarrass themselves with you. And have a great party at your restaurant with it. Ugliest sweater gets something. I don't know. But have a fun party. And then everyone else is going to want to take pictures. And try to look at the thing. It's all I got to have. just like it. Instagram it. Am I going up? Can you guys hear me? Okay. Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, whatever works for you guys. But have an ugly sweater contest. Breakfast with Santa. This is simple. And I could not believe how effective this was. Go to the mall. Santa, will you come have breakfast with some kids in my restaurant? Yes. Here's $100. Come to my restaurant. Make pancakes. Pancakes are cheap. Lots of kids, lots of parents are going to show up for pancakes with Santa. I could not believe how effective this was. I couldn't seat everyone in my restaurant when I did this. We're getting like 12 bucks for pancakes for kids and to sit on Santa's lap and take a picture. Yeah. Breakfast with Santa, one of the best ones you can do. And then a hosted holiday party. This is an interesting microphone. I can talk about a hosted holiday party. This is like a wedding where you have different tables, but there's a lot of offices out there that don't have enough people and a big enough budget to support a full office party where they take over a banquet room. So you take over a banker room, close down your restaurant, and sell a table of eight. Maybe there's a doctor's office with four people that work in the doctor's office, plus their spouses, that's eight. You supply the photographer, you supply the band, you set up a nice big buffet, and you chart, you figure out what all your costs are, maybe get a photo booth in there, that's fun, something fun, think of like weddings. But then this way, those smaller offices that wouldn't have the budget, maybe they're making a reservation, but they're not gonna spend as much at a reservation, and they're not gonna have as good of a time as if you hosted a party for them. I don't know how big your bank rooms are, et cetera. You, can, you guys can see what works best for you. But run a secret Santa at that. And have people trade gifts with people they don't even know. Think about how that makes you look in your restaurant. If business is happening in your restaurant, hey, how are you? We just shared a gift at a, at a party. We didn't know each other. Now you're going to think of that restaurant as a place where things happen, where you meet people, where you engage, where business happens. Make that your restaurant. What's missing today? I talk about social media a lot. I love social media, but what's missing today? Hey, I'm Ryan. When was the last time one of you did that to your customer? Looked him in the eye. Did you feel that? So great PR, free press. Don't take advantage of this. Holiday fundraisers for your favorite charity. A lot of people, well, I, I back up a second. Everyone asks me, how do I get more press? How do I get PR? My neighbor's always getting all this stuff written up about them. Well, one, you gotta do something that's press worthy. And then you gotta tell the press that I'm doing something press worthy. But people do this for the wrong reason. Don't have a charity, don't have a charity event at your restaurant just to get free press. Have a charity event at your restaurant because you want to. Work with a charity you love. Make it real, serve great food. Don't do what everyone else does. Everyone else has the charity event at their party or at their restaurant. 
and then they dummy down the food because they say, oh, I want to give as much money to charity as possible, but then you have all these people in your restaurant giving money to charity, and then they think your food sucks. Who's done that? We've all done that. We've all cheaped out for the charity event. Don't do that. Don't do that. When this, when our hands touch a football, we score every time. Every person in your restaurant, don't do that. Charge more. Give more to charity. Give them a great experience. Let the press know. Feed a family for Thanksgiving, a basket brigade. This one's really close to my heart. My wife and I do this every year. And um, we wake up early in the morning, we cook for the restaurant. Our restaurant was closed, but we wake up in the morning, we cook for the restaurant, we would, um, people would come in and pick up their meals to go, and then we would shut down the restaurant at like four. But after we shut down the restaurant, my wife and I pack up a great Thanksgiving meal. I mean, mashed potatoes, stuffing, green beans, everything. The whole, the, the turkey, everything. We box it all up, and we walk over to someone's house, we ring their doorbell, someone that we know, someone we've set up ahead of time. This isn't someone who wouldn't eat on Thanksgiving if they didn't have the food that we delivered. This is someone who wouldn't feast. Right? How grateful are we all in this room? I mean, seriously, how grateful are we? There's so much food out there. So much of that food. It's not, when I say it's going to go to waste, it's not that it's not going to go to waste. It's here for a reason. We're going to taste it. We're going to love it. But there's so much food in this country that gets thrown out. So I'm talking about a feast. I'm talking about dropping it off and looking someone in the eye and giving them a feast for Thanksgiving. God. Whew. I do that every year with my wife. And then what we do is we go home and we toast and we break bread. And my wife and my family, we feel so grateful. We feel so grateful that we influence someone's life. You do that. It's easy. I'll show you guys how to do it. I'll tell you exactly how to find a family. I got to thank Cisco on this one because Cisco's always been good to me. They've always helped me out. They've always given me some stuff that I can give to other people. That's what you get when you work with a company like this. Baby Glazer's going to get mad at me because I just opened up the room. Everyone's going to ask him for charity. <laughs> All right, don't go to Cisco for that. But go to other vendors. They all did. They all, it didn't cost me a penny. I got everything donated. It just takes a little bit of work. It takes a little commitment. Yeah. Give a free holiday cooking class. You know, bring in your chef. You're gonna, these are the menus you're going to do. You know, whatever. These are things that are press worthy. Uh, a market, marketing and cross promotion. So work with a local retailer. Your favorite retailer, they've got a list. You've got a list. But your lists aren't the same. So if they spend a certain amount of money in your restaurant, they get a discount at the retail store. If they spend a certain amount of money at the retail store, they get something at your restaurant. You guys cross promote. You spend half the money on advertising. You spend half the effort on advertising, you get twice the business. Now a direct response, send a holiday card. You guys are all gonna take pictures of your family, right? Who spends more time at their restaurant than with their family? That's, your, that's part of your family, if not your family. So send that to your customers. Take a picture with your staff, take a holiday card, send it out to them. Send a gift, take your 10 best customers. Your 10 best customers, send them a gift, wrapped, handwritten note. If your writing is like mine, hire someone to write it for you. No, give me my writing. When they open that up and they see it came from the local restaurant, oh my god. Those people care about me. They remember, we're gonna spend money there. We're gonna spend a lot of money there. Send them a gift. Social media contests and surveys, I'm not gonna get into everyone. I love, where is it, the uh, best picture of holiday lights, things like that, like engage. Say, post the best picture of your favorite holiday lights on our Facebook page. Well then people are thinking of your restaurant as more than food. They're coming to your Facebook page because they wanna go see where the best lights are in town. And then, every once in a while when you run that special on Facebook, they're already coming to your Facebook page. If all you're doing is running specials on Facebook, come get this, come get that, and nobody's looking at your stuff, trust me. 12 Nights of Christmas, this is probably the best email campaign I've ever seen during the holidays. Like, I don't have time to get into it, come talk to me after, but run a 12 Nights of Christmas holiday campaign. It's all done automatically, we set it up ahead of time, and you don't have to do anything. Simply email your list and invite them into your restaurant. What's your name? Fernando, I'm Ryan. Hey, come on into my restaurant. I'm serving my grandmother's brisket this weekend. It's so good. She showed me the recipe, and I'm going to share it with you. Just invite them into the restaurant. Let's talk about email for a second. No politics, I'm going to do this quick. This is an email from Barack Obama. But you'll notice it's not addressed to me. So let's not get into politics here. This is addressed to my brother. But the point is, this is the President of the United States. This is how he sends emails. I'll read you the first line. This Saturday, Michelle and I are heading out to events as part of a National Day of Service. I hope you'll join us. The President of the United States. He could send out the fanciest photography, the most complicated email in the world, this works. Who's using Gmail at home? Yeah, who, if you're not using Gmail, who at least agrees that a lot of people are using Gmail? 
Gmail just divided your email into three. Gmail is telling you what to read and what not to read. If you're sending out a newsletter, like a constant contact type newsletter with pictures and things, trash. It's going into the promotions box. No one's reading it. Your numbers are going down. Google knows. They know what you're doing. Send them an email from your heart. Thanks, Barack. Not president. Thanks, Barack. Just invite him into your restaurant. It's easy. Show a little holiday. Okay, so now we're going to execute. We're at the holiday season. Show a little holiday cheer. Be more gracious than usual. Give a little gift to everybody. Uh, it could be as simple as your favorite family recipe on a card. Just give it to your give it to your guests. Every guest that comes into your restaurant. Uh, take care of the kids. Offer complimentary champagne or punch or something for your guests. If you had friends over, which many of you will during the holidays, what's the first thing you're going to do when they walk in the door? You're going to shake their hand. Right? I got some champagne over here. Let's go get a glass of champagne. Let's toast to the holidays, right? Do the same for your guests. Come on. Give them something. Maybe it's not champagne. Maybe it's something else in your restaurant. Show a little holiday cheer. Be gracious. This is what Mr. Glazer over there came up with, which I love, and I ran with a little more. Take a picture. Set up like, you guys know what a step and repeat is? Like a little banner you can have made that has like the name of your, logo or your restaurant and like repeats over and over again. It's called step and repeat. You can get one of those made for like 100 bucks on the internet. Put it next to your tree. Set up a little laptop or an iPad or something with a webcam or even just a tripod. And you can get software. It's called Spark Booth. Spark Booth. It's like 50 bucks. It'll automatically do the whole thing. All someone has to do is take the picture. They get their whole family. They're by the tree. They're in your restaurant. They get this picture taken. They walk over to the laptop. What are they putting in the laptop? Their name, their email address. Right? So now you got their name and their email address. They got a picture. Where's that picture going automatically? Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest. Who else wants to share in the fun? Who else wants to have fun at that? That restaurant's fun. I want to have fun in there. Right? Holiday decorations, less is more. Simply decorated tree goes a long way. Uh, silver lights, a bell. I stay away from anything too religious. You never know. We're a more diversified world than we've ever been. This will tow under the door, but make it fun. When people walk in, joke with them. Hey, those two need a kiss over there under the mistletoe. You know, have fun with it. Um, simple, neutral colored lights, and address all five senses. Smell, sight, sounds, touch, taste. Do you guys know that you can't taste without smell? Did you know that? Close your nose, not now, but close your nose. Put cinnamon on your tongue. You can't taste the thing. The minute you open up your nose, it blows up in your mouth. So in enhance all the senses. Um, appreciate your staff. It's going to be tough during the holidays. We get busy. So show a little extra appreciation. Run a survey online. Whichever server gets rated the highest, give them a little gift. Relax the holiday dress code. They'll have more fun. Uh, expect higher volumes at odd times. Let them have your little pep talk. You know what? Put your hands in here. We're going to have a party tonight. It's going to be fun. Turn up the music a little bit. Give your staff a little more power than usual. A lot of us as managers and owners are really bad at doing this, but during the holidays, just give them a little more power than usual. Let them make some decisions. Let them fix some things. And make sure your servers are trained to say happy holidays again instead of Merry Christmas or things like that. It's, I like happy holidays. It's a little more, more neutral. Again, get your guests to en enroll in a loyalty program. There's a great loyalty program out there today, mobile. Um, this is what Cisco does for you guys. This is what Cisco does for you guys. They do all this great stuff for you, and I love it. I love this company. I love everyone that works here. Because we're talking about loyalty here. I didn't know there's going to be a loyalty program here. I'm just, I'm just talking about loyalty. Well, there's a loyalty program right there. Go sign up with them. If you don't have a loyalty program, it's great. Get them to follow you on Facebook. Add them to your email list. So now here's where the, we're wrapping this up. Here's the best part. We talked about January, February, filling your restaurant. Offer January parties at a discounted rate. It's happening more and more. Companies out there, I know you guys think this is weird, but more and more companies out there are not booking holiday parties because they're too busy during the holidays. They're traveling, they're busy, we're all busy. So give the room away for free in January. Customer bounce back. You know at the bottom of your POS, your receipt, you could print a little message and it could say, um, uh, you know, come join us and bring this receipt, come join us in January, get something, a little bounce back. Um, special holiday party for people who join your loyalty, your summer in the snow barbecue. Okay, I know it doesn't snow here, but it's still kind of fun, you can get the theme. Coronas and lime and burgers and hot dogs. Do a party, but it's it's a party that only people who join the loyalty program can come to. You've got to make it exclusive. And then this is the best, guys. This is whoa, what was that? 
I, I, when I came up with this one, I was like, this is good. This is really good stuff. What's everyone's uh, holiday resolution? To 